meaning the salary of the teachers will be 40% pure variable. So meaning if there are no enrollees, there will be no salary on the part of the teachers. But if the revenue is 100 million, their salary will also be 40 million, 40% 40 of 100, or 10 million per year, pure pigs. Regardless of our revenue, we have to pay them 10 million per year. Or mix, 2 million per year plus 10% of tuition pay revenue. Before I present the computation, now, which among the three alternatives will you select? Which one? First, if you will select the first one, you are an aggressive finance, uh, not aggressive, you are a conservative finance manager. Why you are a conservative? That is low risk, low return. Why? Because if there is no enrolling, definitely, you will have no loss. But if the enrollees will increase, you will have lower profit because the salary of the teachers will also increase. If you will select this one, this is aggressive approach. High risk, high return. Kahit ang employer, if even if your students are only 10 and your revenue is only 10,000, you still have to pay 10 million fixed salary. This one is, of course, semi-variable, semi-fixed, definitely. This one is, of course, medium risk, medium return. But again, as I have discussed, diba, you will use your variable salary if there is uncertainty on the increase of revenue. But if you are sh not sure, but there's probability that the revenue of your particular institution will increase, then you use pure big salary. <coughs> uh, okay, so I have discussed this. Uh, this one, diba? the CBP analysis, net income under different revenue scenarios. Now, as we can see, if the revenue of the company is 3 million and of course the salary rate is 40%, definitely the gross profit is 60%. So 3 million times 60%, your net income will be 1.8. See? In 3 million revenue, your cost is 40%, so your profit is 60%. 60% of 3 million is 1.8. But if you will use pure picks, 3 million less the cost of 10 million, you will have net loss of 7 million. If you will use the mix, so 2 million, you will have a loss of 1.3. Now let's go to 10 million revenue. If your revenue is 10 million, your pure bar, your revenue under pure bar, uh, net income will be 6 million because your cost will be 4. 10 times 60%, 6. But if you will use pure mix, break even lang. But if you will use mix, you will have a, a net income of 7 million. But if your revenue will be 100 million, your net income under pure variable will be 60. Under pure mix, it will be 90. Under mix, it will be 88 million. So, your decision will depend on your forecast of revenue because it will affect your net income in the future. But if you are really conservative, then you use pure variable. But if you are actually aggressive, you use pure fix. <coughs> That's why normally in recollection, normally there are direct recollection to be conducted by schools and the salary of their uh, their uh, facilitators are fixed. But the problem is the participants are only three. <laughs> oh, so what will happen to that? Diba? To the recollection school. But if the participants are 1,000 and the salary will be fixed, diba? the institution will be profitable. That's why it will depend upon the forecasted revenue. That's why if your forecasted revenue is wrong, that will be disastrous to your financial performance. Another one, this one. Direct hire or outsource. This is a very critical issue. Why? Of course, as you all know, the LSU announced the non profit promoting uh, human rights. They are outsourcing janitor and security guards. Diba? Of course. The Board of Trustees of Charity College is considering two alternatives for its maintenance department. First, direct hire, but with a variable salary of 10 pesos per classroom clean. Diba? Okay, 
For every classroom they will clean, they will obtain 10 pesos per classroom. So, pag nakaisandahan, 1,000. Diba? Variable. Or, outsource to a manpower agency at a fixed payment of 1 million. In that case, there will be no employer-employee relationship. It will be the agency who will be the employer. <coughs> now, here's the problem. Which decision will you make if you are the board of trustees of that charity college? Diba? Diba? So, if you will outsource it, what will be the implication? They will be no longer your employees. Their retirement pay, separation pay, SSS, pag-ibig pilihan, that will be the problem of the agency. But look at your mission vision. Diba? O si... Diba? But what's the problem? That will affect your profitability if you will select direct hire. Why? If you will direct hire them, they will be compelled to provide scholarship to their children. And then SSS, pag-ibig, bill health, retirement pay, benefits. And that's one of the reasons why most schools do not diba? direct the hire their maintenance and security agencies. And no one is complaining. Okay na. Diba? School it. We are, di ba, help. For example, it's outsourced to. And if, the, uh, for example, if the... Manpower agency. Uh, the, the, the one who, uh, who, who is uh, working in, like, for example, in the LSU, you have a neighbor problem. Ah, okay. To whom is okay. Going to Assuming the manpower agency was not properly paying the minimum wage. The SSS, uh, pag ibig bill head. Or on the other hand, if this school is never just paying really the correct payment for okay. the agency, and then the agency did not. Did not, okay. Under the labor code, diba? unfortunately, the organization is an indirect employer. And under the law, it is the duty of charity college to ensure that the manpower agency is properly paying the minimum wage benefits. If not, the charity college is indirectly liable, meaning the indirect employees may file an action against the charity college. That's why before you accept a manpower agency as the, your service provider, please ensure that they are complying with the uh, benefits provided by the or, or, or else you will be the one to be liable. Solidarity. If the manpower agency cannot pay the indirect employer like charity college will be the one to pay. That's why it's very strict. There's meaning when it comes to outsourcing because we want to see if you are complying with the labor code. That's the implication. But fortunately, the manpower agency is complying so there will be no problem. The uh, charity college will just pay the fixed amount. And but the problem with that is that normally in outsourcing, it is still the indirect employer such as Charity College which is controlling the work. That's why there's a, a labor case decided by the Supreme Court. The issue in that case is whether or not Charity College shall be liable for the unpaid salaries of the indirect employees. Because according to them, that the manpower agency is not actually a legal entity. It is actually set up by the board also in order to minimize the cost. But unfortunately for the laborers, the charity college in that case was able to prove that the manpower agency has sufficient, sufficient investment and therefore they have separate personality. Charity college will not be liable because the first recourse should be to go first to manpower agency. Because unfortunately for the, for the labor union, they go directly against the charity college. That's why it is dismissed. So you, just, you file your action first before the, against the manpower agency. And if it cannot pay the obligation, then go after the indirect employment. <laughs> Our labor code is actually pro poor. <laughs> For example, a charity college decides to give incentives to those uh, the, the, the janitors, for example. But are they allowed to do so? Uh, even outsource. Yeah, for example, they decided to give a Christmas basket. Yeah. 
yeah. which normally done are school eleva. That's allowed, but that will be considered as a donation to charity of the school. So that will be exempted from donor tax. That's allowed, but it does not mean that we are considering them as our employees. That, that cannot be used as evidence that there is employer-employee relationship. What is important is the presence of control. Control is the most important factor for employer-employee relationship. So, if the manpower agency is the one that controls the way, the manner performing the job, then it is the manpower agency which has the employ uh, which has the employer employee relationship with the uh, janitor security companies. But if it is the charity college which actually control the manner on how to perform their duties, that will be a big problem because the Supreme Court might consider charity college as the direct employer. But diba, as we have seen in several diba, several institutions, diba? normally we are diba? normally sometimes that's sometimes the problem. But of course, if the manpower agency has a strong personality, is registered with SEC, so there will be no problem. That's why it's up to the institution to select a legal manpower agency. Oh, ito siya. Now, number of classroom. Diba? So, 300,000 classroom. If direct hard cost times 10, the cost will be 3 million. But for outsourcing cost, it will only be 1 million. If the number of classrooms to be cleaned became 50,000 times 10, the cost is only 500,000. Fixed cost outsourcing, 1 million. Number of classrooms cleaned is example, 100,000 times 10. Sorry, this is 10 million. So, this 10 million favorable siya sa outsourcing cost. 100,000 times 10, I say, sorry, 100,000, same lang pala, 100,000. So, so if that is the case, you have to predict the number of classrooms to be because it will be definitely uncertain. So, it depends upon the number of classrooms. Sa malilinis nila. Now, another one. This is a very important decision, of course. Continue or close a business segment. Now, what's the problem with this? Which happened in University of Santo Tomas. They closed their elementary department. Why? Because their elementary department is in carry net loss. Now, what's the problem? If you will close it, some of your employees will be laid off. But if you will not close, close it, the net loss of that department will be shouldered by the other department. Now, let's look into this. The financial performance of the different operating segments of University of Divine is presented below. Elementary department has a tuition revenue only of 10 million. The direct cost is 15 million. So, 10 minus 15. The segment margin or loss is 5 million. Minus the allocated common cost. The allocated common cost pertains to the cost of the uh, the probably the headquarters, the salaries of the board of trustees, the managers, which are allocated to the different segments. And the allocated cost is 30 million. Therefore, the operating loss is 35. On the part of college, the tuition fee revenue high school is 100 million minus 80 million direct cost. So the segment margin is 20 million minus the allocated com uh, common cost 30. So the operating profit of high school is 10 million. In the part of college, 200 million revenue, 150 million cost. So the segment margin is 50. The allocated common cost is 30. The operating profit is 20 million. Now, based on this data, which department shall be closed? Huh? How about high school? College. Will you close college? No. Huh? How about elementary? Will you close it? Yes. How about high school? Will you close high school or not? No. Diba? It has a net loss of 10 million. Yes. But will you close it? No. no. Because it has a contribution margin of 20. Yes. If you will close it, we will lose that 20 million. Yes. But this 30 million will still be absorbed by the college. Yes. Still, we have to pay the 
90 million. So the common cost shall not be considered in making the decision because this allocated common cost is irrelevant in making the decision whether to close or continue the segment. But at the end of the day, this is for financial purposes. Again, if you are the head, the member of the board of trustees, can you close elementary department? you can see that those who are studying in the elementary department are definitely children of your employees in the college and high school. That's a very hard decision, especially if some of them are scholars. UST, that happened. And it was close. It's a very hard decision on the part of the Board of Regents, but I have to respect it as a CPA but I cannot accept it as a professor because some of my co-professors, they were forced to, they, to enroll their children to another paying university. But what will USD do? If USD will not do that, it will result to net loss. They have to shoulder this five million. That's why be careful with this allocated common cost. They should not affect your decision because they will just be absorbed by the other segment. Okay? Ah, okay. Now, let's go now to working capital management. Uh, working capital, it refers to the difference between the current assets and current debit. This one's very difficult. But I will just simplify it. Let's just assume current assets are the cash. Okay? And current liabilities are the salaries payable. So generally, we should have more cash than salaries payable, utilities payable, water bills. If you will not be able to properly control your working capital, it will affect your profitability or liquidity. Why? If you have excess cash, you have to invest your excess cash in stocks, bonds, or money marketplace. Man. But unfortunately, if you will invest it in time deposit, you cannot withdraw it immediately. So you will, have, you will not have enough cash for the payment of your liabilities. Example, we have excess cash of 10 million. We invested that 10 million to time deposit. Now here's the problem. We have outstanding salaries payable of 1 million to our employees. And we do not have enough cash for the payment of it. So what will we do? We will borrow 1 million from a bank on an interest rate of 6% per Ano. But our ex excess cash is invested in a bank which is paying us 0.25%. Oh, see? You invested your cash for 0.25%. Then you will borrow cash for the payment of 6%. Or 6%. See? That's why you have, you have to be very careful when it comes to your excess cash. It's either profitability or liquidity. liquidity. You may be profitable because you invested your excess cash in investment, profitable investment, but you are not liquid because you cannot properly pay your obligation. Okay? Uh, these are the approaches in working cap capital financing policies. First one is conservative approach. It favors liquidity over profitability. Profitability means that there is income. Liquidity means availability of cash in the near future. So what's the difference between the rich people and poor people? Rich people became rich because they are definitely aggressive. They pay for profitability over liquidity. Poor people are became poorer and poorer because they are conservative. Why? They will continue to work on a particular job. Even they will incur net loss. I have a friend who is working in a factory. His salary is only 300 pesos, but his transportation expense is 200. And of course, you have load and then dinner, breakfast dinner, uh, lunch dinner. I computed it. I told him, you are suffering net loss of 50 pesos per day. His answer, at least I have cash. <laughs> because, you know, at least I have cash. You have cash, but net loss. At least I have cash. <laughs> That's my pera ako. Saan gali yung pera? Inutan. At least I have cash, even net loss. That's the difference. The rich, they do not have cash. Because most of their cash are invested in 
investment property, land, they are not liquid, but they are rich because their funds are earning so much. Diba? So, if you are the head of your institution, which will you pay for? Conservative, pay for liquidity. Example, all assets are financed by non-current liar. Example, you need office supplies. Office supplies <coughs> lang. Ball pen, pencil, pen paper. These are current assets. They will be consumed within one year. And still, you use long-term loan. So, para makabili ka ng 1 million na office supplies, you went to BDO and borrowed 1 million pesos, payable in 10 years. So, what's the problem? That will be subject to 24% per year. But what's the good news? You will not be compelled to pay, it, uh, you will not be compelled to pay the principal uh, immediately because it will become due in 10 years. You will have more cash, but after 10 years, you will suffer net loss because the interest will be 240 per year times 10 years, that will be 2.4 million. So the 1 million will become 3.4 million. At least for 9 years, I have so many cash. But after 10 years, I will have to pay 3.4 million. And that I will suffer. Huh? That's the normal problem of teenagers. They will obtain cell phone. Cell phone is a current asset. And sometimes they will use long-term loan. 3 years, 4 years, 5 years. And after that, their 50,000 loan will become 150,000. Because they do not want to, uh, to pay it immediately. That is conservative. Diba? The, the other one is aggressive. Diba? It favors profitability over liquidity. All assets are financed by current diet. This is very dangerous. Why? Example, the NSU wants to obtain a particular London building. The cost is 1 billion. In order to finance this building, the NSU obtain a 30-day loan. If it's a 30-day loan, that will be payable within 30 days. But the interest rate is only 1%. Normally, the interest rate is low. So if that is the case, the income of our building is very high because that will earn rental income. So we will be profitable. Unfortunately, we have to pay the loan within 30 days. How can you obtain 1 billion within 30 days? But still, we are profitable. What we do not have cash to pay our obligation. So what will we do? We will mortgage and sell our building. And then we will become bankrupt. <laughs> See? You will be profitable for 30 days, but after that, you will become bankrupt. So the best policy is matching. What matching? <laughs> it balances the trade-off between liquidity and profitability. Meaning, current assets are financed by current liar. If you need office supplies, inventory, use short-term financing because they have lower interest rate. If you need building, land, use long-term financing so that they will be much. Diba? Medium risk and medium return. At least, not super aggressive, not super conservative. But especially when it comes to a uh, church, diba? definitely our source of financing will be Normally, debt financing. Normally, debt financing. Because we cannot ask for investment. We are non-stock, non-profit. So, debt financing. Be careful when obtaining loan from the bank. To those who obtain loan from the bank, did the bank provide for, I think, incentive, lower interest rate, because uh, charitable or religious? No. They have the same interest rate, and they will obtain the same kind of collateral, regardless of your nature of your organization. Because they are in the business of banking, lending money, so they cannot provide uh, advantage. So you be, be careful. You, know, you will be asked probably in the future, you will become the head of the particular organization. Be careful when obtaining loans from the bank. Because your property might be foreclosed or mortgage, di ba? Ang kapanginahin, especially pagka 
prime property. Diba? Or especially if the property is used for charity, and of course the home board agent, or used for the orphans, and then the property will be sold for the payment of obligation because of improper management of uh, loan. Now, cash management. Uh, goals in cash management, of course. The goal is to maintain appropriate level of cash and investment in marketable securities to achieve proper liquidity and to maximize income on idle funds to achieve proper liquidity. Normally, this one is the duty of the treasurer. You have to appoint a very good treasurer. The person who understands investment of cash to different stocks, different bonds, and who can balance the amount of your funds to different types of investment. Sometimes, there, there are finance managers who are very aggressive. They will invest all the funds to mining companies. And what happens to our mining companies? The price of the stocks of mining companies drops. So, we will incur probably net loss of 1 million in one day. Ah, di ba? Iiyak. Di ba? But if we will invest it to government funds, which provide for a 1% interest per annum, 1% of 10 million is, 1 million is 10,000, 10,000 only for one year. Kawawa naman, paano naman, di ba? Let's try to purchase several property and let's rent it. Lease it out. But if we will uh, lease it out, how long can we recover it? So those are very difficult decisions. So you have to ask your finance manager, why did you propose this one? Did you study the bank? If it's a government aid, government bonds, no problem. That's guaranteed by the Republic of the Philippines. Example, time deposit offered by a rural bank. The interest rate is 10% per annum. The rural bank is rural bank of, example, uh, Pasilan. 10% per annum. Or 10% per month. And that is high risk, high return. There's a higher profitability, but that is in Pasilan, their head office. Probably that's already under bankruptcy. That's why they're offering that amount of investment. We have to be very careful. In the past, I think there's a scam, 4 billion scam. Can you imagine? From 10,000 pesos in 4 days, it will become 40,000 pesos. I told my friends, do not believe that. That is impossible. Even the best investor, the head of Berkshire Hathaway, cannot do that. 